came to Canada in 1844 with his family. The family had land in East Hope. Uh, Stratford, but he didn't go with them right away. He paused in Montreal and uh, became apprenticed to a carpenter, and he and his brother acquired much of the, the trade knowledge then. They then went on to Stratford and joined the family. At one point he worked for a cooper, and so he would have further practiced his trade, but he must have been a fast learner because the sorts of things that he ultimately was responsible for were full construction, uh, furniture manufacturing. But I know this to be an Eason chair. The upholstery, this is not original. Uh, we had it re-upholstered. Mm -hmm. I think there was probably a fair bit of horse hair in there originally. And also he must have had an excellent business sense because it prospered. They did very well and he employed many people. One of the ways I think William Eason's career was launched is he, he was a contractor and a house builder and he built a significant home in Stratford called the McCullough House. And he was paid in lots of land. And I believe 15 lots of land on what is William Street were given to him. In 1858, uh, the lake behind the Festival Theatre now that's considered quite picturesque was in fact a um, pond that they drew water from for steam for their mill and they lived beside their business. What the now is a very lovely street in Stratford, William Street. Mr. Eason married Margaret McGregor and they had 13 children and 11 survived. One of them, the eldest daughter, Jessie, is my great-grandmother. With all this business and the layering and the ruching and the pleading, that's not, none of that is easy to do. My family inherited a number of items. And then of course, these beautiful pieces here. Yes. We have been taking great pleasure to donate to the museum. Some of them are clearly Eason items. Yeah. One that was actually mentioned in a will was uh, the wedding dress of uh, Jessie Eason when she married Andrew Motterwell. The Eason planing mill, I don't think it began being uh, an all things to all people mill. I think it evolved like many businesses do. What really expanded the business was the contract with the railway, uh, Grand Trunk, to uh, supply the sleepers or ties uh, and that would have been a, a huge contract. Uh, this was, we're talking 1858 now, and so that would have continued for a number of years. Manufacturing of furniture probably was a latter specialty of his mill. William Eason's role in the community, I think, was massive at one time. He was a tremendous employer, and I think uh, he was well-liked. I have in my possession a song uh, that was written about Boss Eason. To Eason's You Must Go. It was all very positive, I believe. He got along well with his employees uh, and with his customers. It was mentioned in the song that his goods were delivered on time. And if you needed anything done, you should go to Eason's because it would be done and done properly. He employed a lot and then he in turn paid uh, community taxes. I think. Probably the prime years would have been 1880, 1890, something like that. 